So the next phyla in Kingdom Fungi that we'll talk about is Phylum Ascomycota. And maybe this background picture might look familiar to you because I got stole it off of Google, but <laughs> because maybe you've consumed these before if you live that fancy life. So let's talk about Phylum Ascomycota. So Phylum Ascomycota is referred to as the sac fungi. Now with Phylum Zygomycota, remember they were called the zygospore fungi, that zygospore referring to their life cycle. Same thing with sac fungi. The sac has nothing to do with like what this fungus actually looks like, but actually has to do with one of their reproductive stages. And I'll bring that up again when we talk about its reproductive stages. Now the name Ascomycota, that asco, is referring to what the spores are holding. So similar to Phylum Zygomycota, Ascomycota has spores, but instead of them being found in a sporangia, like we saw with Zygomycota, instead their spores are held in a structure called an ascus, and the name Ascomycota, that asco, is referring to the ascus. Some examples of these, so that first slide, and they're also on this slide, are truffles. That's what you see up here. This is what you can train like dogs and pigs to smell out. Very, very expensive um, uh, fungi. Another expensive fungi that you can consume are morel mushrooms, like you see here in the bottom left. And then thinking about maybe outside of human consumption, um, some of the, honestly, I just call the all of the call these all the weird mushrooms, like typical mushrooms that you eat and typical mushrooms you see in the forest are in the other phyla. Phylum Ascomycota is like all the weird mushrooms. This bottom right picture is of cup fungus, but again, doesn't look like your traditional uh, mushroom. So I think of Phylum Ascomycota as just the weird mushrooms. Now, similar to Phylum Zygomycota, we are gonna talk about the life cycle. Here is a diagram I found online. But again, I am going to kind of get rid of a lot of the terms that are in here and focus on four major terms. The four terms I'm going to focus on are ascocarp, ascus, ascospore, and meiosis. And again, this is the sexual part of the life cycle. There is an asexual part of the life cycle that we're really just not going to explore. Now, similarly, I'm going to draw this out for you, kind of using just the simplified um, key words. But again, the, the steps are still, I guess, the same as this image. It's just I'm not using all of these different, um, uh, I'm not labeling all the different steps, and put it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get my screen set up. And again, in your notes, I recommend that you get this set up as well um, to actually hand draw it. So let us go ahead. We're going to start a new one. Beautiful. Let's mirror this. Maybe later. Beautiful. All right. Cool. Okay. So now we have our kind of blank slate so that we can start drawing the life cycle for Phylum Ascomycota. What's really nice about all the fungal life cycles is they're pretty much the same. The structures are called something different, but the actual steps themselves are very similar to one another. Now, the bread molds, I drew a piece of bread to be like, ah, oh, like th this is where it's growing. What I am going to draw is, let's see if I can find like a brown color. Um, we're going to call this... <laughs> We'll just, you know, we're just going to call it dirt. So here's our dirt. Um, and we'll just use white to draw everything else just so it sticks out more. So similar to Phylum Zygomycota in our dirt or our substrate or our log or whatever it's growing in, there's hyphae. And some of these hyphae are positive type and some of them are negative type. And again, this is kind of equivalent to male and female, but again, we don't have that in fungi. So we have the positive mating type and the negative mating type. And as these hyphae are growing, and let me go ahead and label, again, this is hyphae. Remember hyphae, when they are underground, are referred, are, are haploid, so they have one set of chromosomes. So these hyphae are growing and growing and eventually they touch. Now, I drew that circle. This is not a zygospore. That's found in zygomycota. I'm drawing this circle just to make it obvious that they have touched and they have come together. But what happens next is where we start diverging from phylum zygomycota. 
from this uh, combined structure, what's going to start developing is the reproductive structure. The reproductive structure in the case of Ascomycota is the actual above ground fungus that we see. And I am going to draw because I'm going to I can't draw a morel and a truffle doesn't make any sense. I'm going to draw this nice cup fungus. So this entire thing, this entire thing that's above ground, this is the reproductive structure. And specifically, so reproductive structure is kind of a, a vague term. The very specific term for this particular uh, phyla is the ascocarp. So ascocarp. This ascoscarp, think of it, think about it. Two haploid hyphae came together. And when they came together, they started growing together to create this new um, new structure. And I say growing together, what I really mean is they, they fused together and then from that fusion, this structure started developing. So that's gonna make this ascoscarp 2N. It's gonna make it diploid, right? It is the result of two haploid hyphae coming together. And they start growing to this large above ground structure called the ascocarp. Now the next step, just like we saw in zygomycota, is that we're gonna see the production of spores. Now this is happening at a microscopic level. Now we see this mushroom, but we don't actually see the spores being made because the spores are unicellular structures. So we have to zoom in. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, let's use a different color. Uh, sure, we'll use green. So I'm gonna zoom in to one of the edges of this mushroom. And we're going to pop this out into this box. So again, what this box is just showing is I have zoomed in. It's as if we had a microscope and we we're zooming into the just that section. And then what we would see at the microscopic level are these things that honestly kind of look like fingers. <laughs> these fingers are the sacs. <laughs> Told you it was a sac fungus. The name sac comes from this structure. They're like they being the scientists who decided to name this. We're like, ah. Those look like potato sacks, sac fungus. That's what I got for you. <laughs> so these sacks, this is where the spores are gonna be made. Now in zygomycota, we called where the spores were being made a sporangium. But here in ascomycota, we don't call it that. In ascomycota, each of these sacks, each of these spore making structures are called an ascus. So, Ascomycota has an ascocarp. It has an ascus. In this ascus, now this ascus is just part of the ascocarp, right? It is, it is fingers on your hand. These fingers on your hand are still diploid. This is still part of the ascocarp. So the ascus is where meiosis is going to happen. So I'll go ahead and write that out. So meiosis happens. Very similar to the sporangia and zygomycota undergoing meiosis. So cells inside the ascus are undergoing meiosis. And when they undergo meiosis, they start creating ascospores. Ascospores, pretty much the same thing as spores. Um, but when we use the term ascospores, that tells us, okay, these are spores very specifically from phylum ascomycota. So the asco does matter because that gives us more context as to which kind of spores or which organism we're talking about. So inside of this ascus, there are cells that undergo meiosis. They undergo meiosis to create these ascospores. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in these ascospores. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I very specifically drew eight. Sorry that they're kind of small. I'll try to make these larger. It's actually kind of cool. Um, every single ascus has exactly eight ascospores. So every single one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all of them. I'm gonna show you an actual microscopy picture of this here in a second, and you're gonna see that as well. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just draw an arrow so that you see this. So again, inside that ascus, inside that sac, Special cells are gonna undergo meiosis. When they undergo meiosis, they're gonna create exactly 
eight ascospores. Because ascospores are the result of meiosis, that means these ascospores are going to be haploid, right? The, the conclusion from meiosis is uh, half of the number of chromosomes. Now, similarly, this is not the last step, right? If we're talking about a cycle, we need to get back to hyphae. And so very similar to what we saw in phylum zygomycota and the right conditions, what right conditions mean really depend on the species. But in the right conditions, the ascus will literally burst open. These ascospores are then going to release into the environment. And so that's what I'm going to draw here. Here's them flying out all over the place. And here's some that land in dirt. And if that dirt is feeling kind of nice, if there's a lot of moisture, there's a lot of nutrients, those ascospores start growing in the hyphae. And so I'm going to use this arrow because we wrote hyphae earlier. They're going to start growing into hyphae. Awesome. Now we're at the end of our cycle, right? We started with hyphae and now we are ending with hyphae. And if those hyphae of opposite mating types come together, it starts all over again. So again, my diagram was just looking at the life cycle itself. There's key words here and there, but make sure in your actual notes that what you're doing is making sure you actually know the steps. You can start wherever you want. You can start with, okay, hyphae touch, that's step one. All right, they grow into an ascocarp, that's step two. Um, in that ascocarp, there is an axis. And again, the way you number it doesn't matter. If, if you're writing out these steps, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's what you put as your second step. No, as long as you're doing things, I wouldn't even say in order, because you could start with eight ascospores are formed. Like you could start there. So you can start wherever you want to. Just make sure you're not forgetting steps along the way. So again, as I get my screen set back up, uh, be sure to um, kind of fill in your notes, not just of this picture, but also of the different steps and rewatching this part of the video if you need to. So I'm going to leave it up here for like another couple seconds. All right. So let us go ahead and I just want to show you like one more thing on the PowerPoint and that's pretty much going to be the end of this video. All right, so this again was the kind of official life cycle. What we drew included all of these steps, just not all of the key words that you're seeing in here. The last thing I wanted to show you, so this is looking at a microscopic picture close up of all of the asci that are within a particular fungus. And so what you see, I mean, there are very long, narrow sacs. And in each of these sacs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ascospores. Um, let's see this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're just going to say eight has already been released. Um, but all of these should have eight. And if they don't, maybe some are already released, but this is what it looks like. So it's a huge condensed mass of all these asci. You've got tons of spores. The goal of the spores, because they don't just start growing in a hyphae like willy nilly, it has to be in good conditions. Um, just like seeds, you can have all these seeds if you don't have enough water, if they're not getting enough nutrients, they're not going to grow. Same thing with spores. So the goal is that this fungus is making as many spores as possible in the hopes that one of them will land in good conditions and start growing. It's honestly a game of numbers. Uh, and, and, and the more you can make, the more likely you're going to be able to successfully reproduce. So with that, that's pretty much it for phylum, uh, phylum ascomycota. Again, these are very similar to our phylum zygomycota in the sense that the life cycle for the most part is similar. It's just there's different structures at play. We're going to take a look at one more phyla and you're going to see that holds true even for this third phyla that we explore as well.